Morning. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome everyone to our additive manufacturing webinar series. This is the first webinar on the uh, Mark Forge carbon fiber and uh, metal technology. Um, my name is Wayne Tanner. I'm with Adaptive Corporation and uh, we want to thank you for joining our webinar. Um, our agenda today, we're going to have some brief introductions, then we'll go through the Mark Forge additive manufacturing technology. Uh, we have some leasing, leasing and financing options we want to show you, and then we'll take a, have a short Q&A. So first, an introduction to Adaptive Corporation. We are um, a long-time Dassault Systems VAR and uh, several other OEM products, but uh, we have over, collectively, we have over 200 years of PLM experience. We have strong partnerships with all of our, our customers, completing over 400 successful projects in the engineering space. And we offer one of the most comprehensive uh, digital to physical product offerings in the industry. So our products that, that we offer and support to our customers range from on the design side, CATIA, uh, simulation side, uh, Simulia, MSC software, virtual manufacturing, additive manufacturing, those are the Mark Forge products we'll be talking about today. Inspection and metrology, we have laser scanners and services, all wrapped inside of our enterprise collaborate, collaboration tool, 3D experience from Dassault Systems. We are the digital physical product lifecycle life cycle company. We have over 500 customers, some of who you see uh, there at the bottom of the screen. Adaptive also offers services and trainings for, training for all the products that uh, we uh, sell and support. So we offer PLM, uh, PLM services from architectural planning to uh, support and uh, installation, engineering services for mechanical design, reverse engineering, simulation services, simulation analysis for a whole range of, of uh, different domains, as well as method and process development. And on the inspection and metrology side, we offer on-site uh, scanning and uh, measurement and first article inspection. With that, I want to introduce our two speakers today. The first is Jason Rose from Mark Forge. He's going to be talking about the Mark Forge technology. And the second is James Mowbray from uh, Complete Capital Services. He'll be talking about some of the uh, financing options that we, we want to be able to offer as well. So with that, Jason, I'm going to turn it over to you. And thank you, Wayne. My name is, uh, can I just confirm that everybody can hear me? At least from the adaptive side? Yes. Yes. Perfect. And um, first, again, my name is Jason Rose. I'm the regional channel, ma channel manager for the Midwest for Mark Forge. So I work with uh, all of our channel partners. Um, we were delighted to have adaptive uh, join us last year as a partner. Um, they've done a, a fantastic job working with customers to I understand uh, their business to a point where we can make recommendations for technology. Um, one of those technologies is Mark Forge, and today I will be talking uh, a little bit about our portfolio, um, a few different technologies, including our composites and our plastics technologies. I will discuss our newest metal technology, and uh, one underlying thing with all of this is uh, Mark Forge. We develop the machines. Um, we develop the hardware, we develop the software, and we develop the materials. Um, to you as a customer, we do this so that when you uh, invest in our technology and decide to partner with Mark Forged and with Adaptive, that you are ensured success by um, guaranteeing our quality out of the back end of the machines. So again, I, I will come back to this at the end of the presentation, but um, here is a visual of um, our current product portfolio. So you'll see we do have um, four different machines from the Onyx one up to the Mark X. Um, those vary in sizes. They also vary in different material types that you can use. Uh, those four machines are our plastic and our composite uh, product lines. Um, as mentioned, we do have a metal 3D printer that is um, starting to ship to customers in September. Uh, we are taking pre-orders on that machine. I will also be discussing uh, that technology as well. 
So a little bit about who Mark Forged is. And, and in this section, I like to discuss um, a little bit about what goes on in the back of the minds at people at Mark Forged. So one of the things we always look at is we want to evaluate the industry both from a manufacturer's perspective and also look at it from um, a perspective of what technology is currently out there. And then we try to break down barriers. Um, Greg Mark founded Mark Forged in 2013. Uh, we've been shipping machines for um, over two and a half years now. We have thousands of machines in the market. Uh, when we first started, um, Greg looked at it and said, okay, what, what can we do different than what the industry has been doing the last 20, 25 years? Obviously, 3D printing is not a brand new uh, topic or concept, but some of the new machines materials that you're seeing being introduced to the market are. So Greg Mark's background, um, his previous company actually did uh, aftermarket spoilers for cars. So he was doing carbon fiber layups um, day in, day out. And obviously, as somebody who understands composites, he looked at it and said, well, what if we could take these concepts and bring it to a 3D printer? So a 3D printer is extremely beneficial whenever you're doing uh, short run type manufacturing, whether that will be with um, making a concept of a uh, product that you eventually want to make, aka a prototype, or even on the tooling side, where you say, hey, we're only going to make a few of these, um, 3D printing is extremely beneficial. Um, with his background in composites, what he looked at was if we could find a way to bring the strength of composites, but also the light weights aspect of composites, if we could bring that over to 3D printing, um, it's going to open up where 3D printing can be used within a manufacturer's environment. So looking back on 3D printing in the last 25 years, most people and most companies are using it to create a concept model of the product that they want to make. They're using it to print prototypes. Um, again, when you ask a lot of people that have used 3D printers in the past, um, one of the things they say is this, this part is great. It's getting my, um, my ideas across to everybody I have to, but we'd love to be able to fit this into a subassembly. We'd love to be able to print a part strong enough, functional enough that we fit into a subassembly or possibly look at creating tooling, printing tooling strong enough that it can hold your part. There's not deformation um, and you can, you can still get your job done. So what we looked at was, um, the industry as a whole, and many of you, these are materials that you're used to working with, whether um, it's on the plastic side or uh, with a current 3D printer, but nylon and ABS, um, some of the most popular materials you'll see in 3D printers. Um, what we did was we looked at those materials and said, okay, what are the benefits and what are the downsides? Obviously, there are benefits with, um, they are, I mean, very printable materials. Um, nylon is a very tough material. It can take a beating if you're using it in a functional environment. Um, and we spun out a material called Onyx. What Onyx is, is it's, it's a mixture of uh, nylon six with chopped or powdered carbon fiber. So that material alone does give you additional strength. When you look at it from a technical perspective on a stress strain curve, uh, one of the other uh, benefits of it is by putting that carbon fiber into the material, it does drop your coefficient of thermal expansion, um, meaning that you can print a lot more reliable, a lot more accurate parts because you don't have that contraction when the material cools. So that is um, what we're using as a base material. And what has made Mark Forge extremely popular and got us into the media is the use of continuous fiber materials. So again, this is where we start getting into pulling concepts from the carbon fiber industry and the composites industry into 3D printing. So what we are able to do is um, understand unidirectional composites and create a material so that you can heat it up you can cool it down, or you can heat it up, lay it in place, and cool it down, and essentially make an extremely strong part. So with our continuous carbon fiber material, we are printing stronger than 6061 aluminum. 
We also have uh, two different types of fiberglass, um, a regular fiberglass and then a iteration of fiberglass that we call our high strength, high temp fiberglass. Um, and then we have a Kevlar material that allows you to um, give a part a lot more stress out of that part before it hits its yield and before it starts to snap. So in saying this, let me explain a little bit about um, the applications that some of our parts are being used at. And some of these applications are ones that uh, people are familiar with using 3D printing in. Um, a lot of them are applications that have been tough for uh, 3D printers in the last 25 years to be extremely successful. So looking at Production tooling and fixtures, everything from um, a jig or a fixture that's holding a part on a CMM machine, um, even to one of our top applications, which is uh, printing the end effectors for the end of robotic arms. And I will talk um, about some specific examples with some of our customers um, in a couple slides here um, on both of those examples. Um, we are seeing our parts being used with end use parts, again, creating strong parts that can hold up um, like what you'd see out of a injection molded part, that type of thing. Um, we are being used with uh, strong functional prototypes. Um, and then we'll also see some usage within drones, the automotive industry, and then also with prosthetics. So looking at some, a, a few customers, um, and I'll talk about a few specific examples with um, uh, some of these customers in the next few slides. But you'll see a few things that they're saying about us. And one of our um, internal sayings is that uh, we want to reinvent manufacturing. And we're providing customers with tools that they have not had um, in the last 20, 25 years to help complement their current business. And one I like to point out is, um, Mr. Everett at Dixon Valve and he's talking about um, working with previous versions of thermoplastics and how they were not able to survive in their production environment. And with the new materials from Mark Forge, they've been able to take a major step forward and they're printing parts that they were making out of metal previously. So a little bit about how we do it. And I'll first start with the plastics and composites side of our business. And what we have is we're feeding two different materials into our machine. So we're feeding a base plastic, um, which is either a regular nylon six, or it's our onyx material, which again, onyx is a mixture between nylon and chopped or uh, powdered carbon fiber. And then we have a second nozzle, which is feeding your choice of continuous fiber material. And you do have the option within our software to print a part in only nylon or only onyx. You also have the ability to select where you want to put continuous fiber within your part. Um, some applications, um, especially for long, thin parts, you want to fill the part with as much continuous fiber as possible to maximize your strength. There are other applications where we actually recommend looking at different uh, iterations of sandwich panel construction because um, for some geometries, especially larger, blockier parts, you do not need to fill the entire part with fiber. You might do um, the bottom, the top, a few layers in the middle, and you can still get a lot of the strength um, that you were looking for in those parts. So the way I like to explain this to somebody who is uh, brand new to the Mark Force technology is very similar concept to concrete and rebar. So Mark Forge plastic um, is our concrete. Um, it's the base material. And then within that, we are reinforcing the part with uh, the continuous fiber materials, which is our version of rebar. So let's bring it back to... Um, Again, looking at specific applications where our parts are being used. And, and people ask me, Jason, what types of uh, organizations and what types of applications um, is there large value in your parts? Where are your customers using it? Um, we do work with uh, the large OEMs. We also work with smaller uh, job shops. Um, 
one application that almost all of those companies have to deal with is creating soft jaw tooling to hold their parts so that they can be manufactured. Um, again, this is one of the top applications for uh, if you could create a part strong enough um, because all these soft jaws are one-offs um, where they might only have to create a couple of them. So it's extremely expensive for them to set up a machine um, and machine it out of their stock. So what we can do is we can go in and pr uh, print that same soft jaw. Um, and when you're looking at it from a cost and time standpoint, um, we're looking at about $20 in material cost for the entire jaw. And total time is right around 15 hours of print time um, with about five minutes of operator setup time. And um, that is completely, uh, um, the, the operation is done as soon as you send the part to the printer. Um, the, the printer handles the print, sends you an email when it's done, and your soft jaw is created. There's no post-processing on our composites um, at all. So another application is um, end effectors for the end of robotic arms. So a lot of factories are moving towards more automated environments. Um, and one extremely expensive aspect of having a robotic arm in your facility is creating the end effectors for the arms. Um, so again, these are usually uh, one-offs, very small run production, depending on the type of part that they will be moving with this robotic arm. And one customer we wor we worked with is uh, Dixon Valve. So you'll see Dixon Valve um, all over a lot of our our corporate videos and a lot of our presentations, they're a company that has made major steps after taking on our technology a couple years ago. And uh, one example of their uh, end effectors is uh, being able to print an end effector uh, in a little less than 10 hours for about $9 a piece. Um, that's compared to what they were doing before. Uh, with CNCing this out of metal where it's looking at about a $290 cost and roughly 72 hours um, by the time they machine it and any shipping time if it is something that they do have to outsource. So that is a little bit about our composites technology. Again, our composites technology can create parts as strong as 6061 aluminum. One advantage of the composite side of the business is, um, as I showed you those print times with the parts, as soon as those parts are done, you pull them off the print bed and they're usable parts. So you can have very quick turnaround, um, very quick internal lead times on being able to uh, create those parts, print the parts, and then get them out to your manufacturing facility. Um, now in saying that there are some limitations that you'll see with composites and plastics that metal can help solve. So when we were looking at um, what type of technologies were out there in the industry um, a couple years ago, we were, of course, wanted to eventually get into metal, knowing that with composites there's limitations with heats, with strengths. Um, so we started looking at various technologies and we kept on coming back to uh, one concept and a way to um, apply our current technology to that concept. So we started looking at the uh, metal injection molding industry where you take a plastic, you mix it with a powdered metal, and you shoot it into a mold just like you would a regular injection mold, and then you bring it through a couple post-processing uh, steps, which include washing some of the plastic out and then sintering that metal together. So when we started coming across this concept of metal injection molding, um, we looked at it and said, this is very similar to what we're doing with our onyx material. So again, onyx is a plastic mixed with um, chopped or powdered carbon fiber. We looked at it and said, we already have some award-winning machines um, printing our composites. The onyx material is our top used material. Um, for all of our customers. What if we could do something similar with metal? So there we created um, a technique that is called uh, ADAM, Atomic Diffusion Additive Manufacturing. And what that is is, again, we're taking a plastic, mixing it with 
a powdered metal. We print that on your print bed, just like you would with our uh, composite materials. We then take that part, we bring it to a wash station to wash off uh, some of the plastic, and then we bring that to a uh, uh, sintering oven for a couple steps. One of the steps is going to be to melt that remaining plastic away. The last step is going to be sintering those metal molecules together. So what we have with these, um, this machine is, again, looking at the total time it takes to machine some of these parts um, can be extremely high. If we can uh, take out 90% of that time and a lot of that cost when you start bringing in um, machine setup and operator time into the equation, you can save a lot of money by just printing the metal parts. Um, a few things that you do have um, compared to working with traditional metals is we can print the same uh, infills that we do with our plastics. Again, it's, it's a very similar printing process to what we've had out in the market for a couple years with our composite technology. So you can do, um, and you do have control over the uh, infill type and infill density of your parts. So if you want a um, extremely dense part with no air gaps, no space in the middle of the part, um, you will just take your, your density or your, your internal infill percentage, um, push it up to as close as you can get to 100%, and you'd print your part. If you do want to create parts that um, do have some hollowness to them, you also have control on the other end of the spectrum saying that, okay, for this part, I want it strong, but I want to remove a lot of that weight. Let's do a very low um, infill type on these parts. So with our Metal X, um, it is expecting to ship to uh, customers starting in September of this year. Um, we are launching it with a few versions of stainless steel. So we're looking at a 17.4 and a 303 stainless. Um, we are working on additional materials. Um, we're listing them as beta right now. Um, those materials are looking like a uh, A2, D2, and M2 tool steel. Um, we have a few versions of aluminum, a 60, 60, 61, and a 70, 75, and then a uh, time. Quick thing I will mention with this process is we are using um, concepts that have been perfected in the metal injection molding uh, industry for the last 20 years. Um, so with our materials, essentially we can take any metal material you can get into a powder form, um, put it inside of a plastic binder, print that, and then be able to bring it through the stages. So when you start talking about the future of the materials we can get into, um, you're looking up near 200, 250 different types of materials that we could use the same printing technique. Yeah. Uh, when you're talking about a build volume, this is in uh, millimeters, 250 by 220 by 200. And we are using the uh, in-process inspection uh, capabilities that are on our largest composite machine. And that is something I can talk a little bit about um, when I go back and look at the uh, total portfolio that we have. And um, this metal printer is, um, was the first printer to break the $100,000 price barrier. Um, I will state that you do need a wash station. You do need um, a sintering oven. And that is all stuff that um, you can reach out to Adaptive. We can help look at your business to say, is this already equipment that you have in place? Um, or we can make recommendations depending on the size of your parts um, and the types of materials that you're looking to use. Um, one key aspect of this machine and our other machines is um, we're always looking at the user side of the equipment. And one of those is making feedstock that um, can be used in an office-friendly environment. So by taking the powdered metal and inserting it within a plastic binder, um, you can handle this material and you can have the machine running in an office environment. Um, I will state that the wash stations and ovens, because you start introducing other gases into it, um, those do need to be ventilated in a shop type environment. And again, these machines will start shipping in uh, September of 2017.
So to take this back um, in talking about our total, total portfolio, we have, again, four composite and plastic machines, um, starting, starting at the Onyx 1, going to the Onyx Pro, up to the Mark II, and then to the Mark X. And then we have the Metal X machine, which is the uh, sole machine for our metals platform. So walking through this, the Onyx 1 um, is starting at $3,500. It prints uh, the Onyx only base material, and the build volume is again in millimeters, 320 by 132 by 154. The Onyx Pro is a $7,000 machine that uses the base material of Onyx, and you can start using continuous fiber within that machine, and that machine can do continuous fiberglass. And then moving up to the Mark II, the Mark II is um, 13,500 has that same build envelope, 320 by 132 by 154, and that can do um, either base material, nylon, or the, uh, the base onyx, and then it can do all four continuous fiber materials. So continuous carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar, and then the high strength, high temp fiberglass. And then the Mark X is um, the production machine for plastics and composites. So it does have a larger build envelope of 330 by 250 by 200. Um, it can do all the materials like the Mark II, but we start introducing um, other features into the machine that help you hit um, the types of tolerances that you're expecting out of your parts. So one of the things we're doing on that machine is we've actually taken a um, laser micrometer from a CMM machine to help the machine understand where it's printing, help it understand how level the uh, build plate is, and then also understanding if there's any inefficiencies in the build plate itself to give you the most accurate first layer um, that we've seen in 3D printing. So that's one thing. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to uh, Adaptive or myself, and we can walk through to uh, figure out which one of the composite technologies might be uh, the best fit for your organization. And then the last one, um, going back to the Metal X, um, as mentioned, we do have uh, multiple materials. We're looking at starting with uh, the 17.4 and 303 stainless. Um, that is using the same laser technology that the Mark X uses. Um, and uh, from here, I will turn it back over to uh, Wayne Tanner to talk about some of the financing options. Thanks, Jason. Um, actually, I'm gonna uh, bring in James from uh, Complete Capital Services real quick and let him go through this, uh, these options that we have available. Wayne, thank you. Hope everybody can hear me. This is yep, James with Complete Capital. Thank you. This is uh, this is James with Complete Capital Services. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just in short, Complete Capital Services, uh, who we are, we're a, uh, a nationwide market leader in financing uh, industrial manufacturing equipment and technology, uh, which is why we partnered with uh, Adaptive Corporation and Mark Forrest. Uh, basically, we're here to provide uh, simple, expedient, affordable financing solutions for a, a Mark Forge purchase. So uh, as the slide is showing, you know, there's a, a, a number of reasons uh, why uh, financing is, is a great option when considering a, a, a printer purchase. Uh, we have a program here which is called the Application Only Program. Uh, that enables a, a business to apply with a, a simple form. And it takes about two minutes to fill out, uh, but we can get an approval, a credit decision within 24 hours, and at that point, uh, offer you a range of options to consider. We have terms available from 24 to 60 months, um, and those terms are set up to help you choose uh, which payment structure is going to help best with your anticipated uh, budget, your cash flow. One of the main reasons uh, businesses um, from large companies to small companies in all industries uh, finance their equipment is to help with their cash flow, to, uh, to keep uh, more cash on hand, uh, save their credit line, and purchase their equipment uh, with small, easy, affordable payments uh, rather than one big lump sum. Uh, 
And that way the equipment itself is generating revenue and basically paying for itself. That makes it a, a very easy uh, equipment purchase. So as uh, the bullet points go on to say, there's up to 100% financing available, which means uh, once you're approved, uh, we would pay uh, adaptive or mark fours in full, um, and then you can get your equipment shortly thereafter. So it's a very quick process. Um, the payment structures themselves are actually very customizable. We want to work with you to find out what your, your business needs are so that we can set you up with perhaps, say, deferred payment structures, whereas you can get your equipment and you'd have anywhere from uh, two to three months of a grace period before you would even have to make your first payment. Uh, there's always uh, other options too, maybe monthly payments, uh, quarterly payments, annual payments, or some type of graduated payment structure that could help you, uh, again, with your cash flow uh, needs. Okay? Um, with any uh, capital equipment purchase uh, and financing, there's a Section 179 potential tax savings, and this type of equipment certainly qualifies uh, for those savings. You'd have, have to see your tax advisor for more information or go online, but that's another big um, value added uh, to making a purchase uh, uh, within uh, 2017. Okay? Uh, either way, you, when you are purchasing this equipment, obviously you're, you're doing this to uh, help your company grow. Uh, you want to keep your competitive edge. Uh, you want to have the latest technology, and this type of what we like to call a no-hassle acquisition just makes it even that much more easier um, uh, to, to help with this with this purchase. Okay, so those are some of the uh, just the main uh, bullet points and benefits of financing from a, a bird's eye view. There, uh, and my job here is, is to basically uh, walk you through the process, uh, help you through the application, which again is very simple and quick, uh, but really help customize a program that's going to benefit your company, get you the equipment you need, and and really get you up and running as quick as possible. Okay, so please consider uh, complete capital services. Uh, if you're going to make a, a Mark Force purchase or two or three, and uh, we will definitely uh, be here to help you uh, along the way, and and I definitely look forward to working with you. Uh, I can pass this now back to Wayne. Okay, thanks, James. Thank you. All right, with that, that uh, uh, wraps up the two components of our uh, of our webinar, and uh, we want to open it up to uh, questions. So if if anyone has questions. Uh, please enter them into the question box on the uh, GoToWebinar panel. Um, okay, we have our, our first question. Uh, Jason, this one's to you. It's, uh, what kind of tolerances are the machines able to uh, maintain? Okay, very, very good question. And, uh, this is asked at every one of my presentations um, and most meetings. Um, so the, the tolerances come down to uh, what types of materials you're working with. So in the reason I say that is, again, back when I was talking about um, the concept of the coefficient of thermal expansion of materials, um, that does come into play in 3D printing. So many of you might be familiar with it from a metals or a plastic standpoint. Um, obviously, some materials work better than others. Um, with 3D printers, like a machine like ours, um, like the Mark Forged or any other FDM, FFF technology, is that you're heating a material up, you're laying it down, and you're cooling it. So when you're working with a plastic, um, more often than not, that plastic material likes to contract when it starts to cool. So that's why we've, um, if you've seen within our portfolio, um, we're really pushing customers to using that material that we call onyx because, again, that has some chopped carbon fiber within that material, which drastically drops that coefficient of thermal expansion, which leads to less warpage, less movement in the parts uh, when they start to cool. So in, in saying that, um, the tolerances we can hit are, um, I mean, anywhere between 20 and 50 microns when you're using our onyx. Um, if you're using our nylon, you might be looking at 50 microns up to 200, possibly 300 microns. Um, when you start placing continuous fiber into those parts, um, that can um, drastically improve a lot of your accuracies and tolerances. 
because that material does not move once you put it in place. So if you need a really flat bottom to a part, um, even if you don't need it with the additional strength, we still recommend using some of the continuous fiber along with onyx just to give you the most accurate parts to what you're expecting out of the machine. Okay, great, thanks. I have uh, another question kind of related to that. Um, the question is, uh, do you have any recommendations? Well, I guess it's, it's not related, but it says, do you have any recommendations for the post-processing components um, for the Metal X? Or, yeah, for the post-processing components. We, so we, um, we are uh, partnering with a, a major manufacturer for the wash stations and the ovens. And um, the wash stations are um, the different models and our different recommendations for you as a customer. Um, are all dependent on the types of material and the size um, that you need, which is, of course, specific for your environment. So I'd recommend that is something that um, the adaptive team does have in place, and they can, of course, get my team involved if need be. But um, feel free to reach out to them, and we can start talking about what's the best fit for your company. Okay. There's one more question here. It says, are there any limitations to the additional materials? Um, for the Metal X Beyond, what you have available uh, now? The, um, with using a, because, because we're utilizing the concepts of metal injection molding, um, it really takes away some of the limitations that you might see with other techniques. So because we're taking a plastic, uh, inserting a powdered metal, um, we do have access to over 200, close to 250 different types of metals that we could put into our plastics. Um, one thing that our team is working on is for each one of those um, metals that we're working on is we wanna understand um, all of the different shrinkage percentages in the sintering stage to make sure that when you invest in our technology and you start using one specific type of metal, um, that it has all the scaling uh, already figured out within the software. So that is what um, our team is working very hard at and understanding that once this is rolled out, and if we push out a different material like um, a D2 tool steel, that you as a customer know that we've already worked through a lot of the testing um, on that specific material. Okay, great, thanks Jason. Hey, I have one more question that came in. Uh, the question is, how do the material properties of the Metal X compare to the standard uh, casting properties? Okay, great, great question. Um, so because we are um, breaking this up into multiple steps and not um, centering the metal on the spot like some of the other metal printing technologies, um, we are seeing a part density up near um, over 98% part density on majority of the materials. We do know that our stainless materials, which are the ones that are going to be re released with the machine in September, um, we're touching about 99.7% density. So it's extremely close to what you're already used to working with um, within metal injection molding or within your casting parts. Okay, great. Um, I don't see any other questions here. Maybe uh, anything else? So let's, uh, so with that, then uh, I'm gonna move on. We have one. Last slide, we want to uh, let everyone know about some upcoming uh, other additive manufacturing events. We have two additional upcoming additive manufacturing webinars. One is on uh, June 28th. We're going to be talking about design optimization for additive manufacturing, so using a new tool that, that came out in our product suite, how to design for additive manufacturing. And then on July 12th, we have a third webinar on simulating the additive manufacturing process, so using some of the... Uh, simulation analysis tools that we have to be able to simulate um, that process and understand residual stresses and deflections coming out of that process. Then in, uh, in the fall we're going to have three uh, in-person workshops in the August 15th, August 23rd, and September 20th in LA, Cleveland, and Chicago. Those workshops are going to go into a deep dive into the, the Mark Forge metal and plastic print, printing technology. We'll have some metal sample parts and uh, green parts coming off the printer that will be available to show you. 
as well as then we'll talk more in depth about the design optimization for additive manufacturing process and simulating the additive manufacturing process. So we hope any of you here that are on the webinar, if you're local to those areas, you'll be able to come and, and uh, join us. And uh, we have the links here. You can go to our website and all those links are, are available on our website. You'll easily find. So uh, with that, everyone, I thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. And uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you at our future webinars or our in-person workshops. Have a great day, everyone.